Hey, welcome once again to JD's Guidance. Friends, uh, today we will see one very important topic that is the test of semi-strong form of market and we will take up one very important test and that is the event study. So, let me just recap you that we have been discussing about what is an efficient market, what are the features of efficient market. We have also seen that there are three forms of efficiency and we are now discussing what are the different tests for a weekly efficient market and for a semi-strong market. And we are continuing this discussion and today we will take up one very important test that is the event study. So as you know that in the last lecture we have seen how to do residual test to test whether a market is efficient in its semi-strong form. In this study or in this lecture we will be covering the event study. Let us understand what is event study. Now uh, actually the idea of event study is uh, based on the fact that if the market is efficient then no investor can earn abnormal returns. Right? If an investor earns abnormal return that would be very temporary and overall if you sum up the different abnormal returns over a period of time it will come to be very negligible very very negligible in the sense it would be zero or very close to zero so if the market is efficient then you are supposed to get what is expected okay and uh, if you are getting something more or something less but ultimately you will find if you sum all these abnormal returns it will come to be come to zero so that is why event study is also considering this fact as we have seen in case of residual test that we are trying to find out whether how much is the residue. I mean what is the excess returns. As you know excess return is nothing but the difference between the actual return and the expected return. So if I have an actual return which exceeds something which is expected then that is known as residual we have seen in the last video. But in event study, we are also checking the same thing. We are trying to see whether there are abnormal returns in the market or not. If investors are earning abnormal returns, that is over and above the expected returns, then there are chances we can have a kind of suspicion that yes, the market is inefficient because there are chances or possibilities that investors can make abnormal earnings. Now, what is event study? Event study is actually referring this scope of earning extra returns or abnormal returns based on some announcement or based on some events, right? For example, if the company is going to declare dividend or the company has got some information and how the price or how instantly the price adjusts itself with this information, right? If the adjustment is instantaneous if the adjustment is very rapid then it will not leave any scope for anyone to earn extra profits or abnormal returns right so we are trying to select a particular event and we will check because of this announcement or because of this event how much abnormal returns the investors have earned and we will check this over a period of time and this is known as event window we will check this before the announcement, before the announcement and after the announcement. And we will check if the cumulative abnormal returns before the announcement and after the announcement sum to zero or very close to zero, then we can declare that the market is efficient. Any kind of announcement brings sensitivity in prices and gives some kind of returns but, but, is, but that gets neutralized over time or that becomes very negligible over time. So let's see with an example. So a lot of information is in front of you but I will explain one by one each of these. Now we are given that there, there are some months from January to July and we have the actual returns for three companies A, B and C. Actual returns are given to you as you can see for these months and you are given the market returns also for these months and everything is in percentage. So the first column is actual returns of the three companies. The second one is the market returns. And you are given that company A has got this characteristics line 
2 plus 0 0.60 times market returns. Company B's characteristic line is this, company C's characteristic line is this. As you have seen already in the last lecture that this characteristic line will help me to identify the expected returns. And when you have company A, you have 1.2 fixed return plus 0 0.60 that is the beta times market returns. So you have to put this market returns 20, market returns 20.12, 20 market returns 19.18 and you will get the values of expected returns of company A. Similarly, you will get for B also 1.4 plus 1 times 20, 1 times 20.12. Likewise, you will get for all the months for company B. And similarly, you will do the same for the characteristic line of C 1.05 plus 0 0.80 times market returns as given to you. This is your expected. And you all know that when you difference out or you find out the difference between the actual return actual return and the expected return you get the abnormal return so what we have done here is we have taken the actual returns and we have deducted the expected returns to find out what is the abnormal returns so you can see company A has a, a has a positive abnormal return B has negative and some positive whereas C also has in some cases positive some cases negative having done these calculations let me now explain you what is the job of event study. What we are trying to see is that what is the date of event. For example, hypothetically, I, I give you that in April 15th, there is an announcement or there is a dividend that has been declared on April. Or some announcement has been made and for which we believe that there is some kind of sensitivity in the price. Right? So this is my event date. This is my event date that is April. So what I will do, I will check the abnormal returns before the event date and you will see the abnormal returns after the event date. Right? So what I can do here, I can consider the event date to be 0. And all the 3 periods prior I will write minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3. And the succeeding once I will write plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Right? So this is my event window and this is the event date. Now what I will do? This information we have understood how to calculate. Now what we can do is that we can find out what is the average abnormal returns. Please try to understand this is the most important part of this event study. We will try to find out what is the average so we will first find out the average abnormal returns three months prior announcement prior announcement so that means what we are trying to do for Three months prior means we will start from this because this is the event day so one two three three months prior so you can see three months prior this was the abnormal return for the three companies so we can write 4.8 plus 6.4 plus 5.05 right then we will find out the average abnormal returns two months prior Two months prior. We'll do the calculation later. Prior announcement. Okay. So two months means we will go to find out this and uh, I mean three months prior. This means this three. Two months prior is this three. 3.73 plus minus 5.52 plus minus 3.19. Remember this is average. So we have to average them with three. We have to average them with 3 because there are 3 companies in our case. Then we will take average abnormal return 1 month prior. 1 month prior announcement. Okay. So 1 month prior means this one. So 5.29 plus 
minus 3.58 plus 0.61 divided by 3. Okay. So we have done with minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Now we will find out average abnormal return on the day of announcement. On the day of announcement. Okay. So on the day of announcement we have January, February, March, April. This is 6.28 plus minus 2.06 plus minus 0 0.41 divided by 3. Then we will do for the average abnormal returns 3 months, sorry, 1 month post announcement. 1 month post means this one. So average abnormal return 1 month, 1 month post, 1 month post announcement. So that means January, February, March, April. Now we are coming to plus 1. So 6.77 plus minus 1.45 plus 0 0.91 divided by 3. Then what is left? We will find out the average abnormal return for, I will write it here. Average abnormal return 2 months post. Two months post announcement. So how we will do this? Two months post means this one. 5.44 plus 1.47 plus 0 0.47 divided by 3. Last average abnormal return. Three months post. Three months post announcement. Okay. So we have to cover this period. 0 0.9 plus 1.6 plus 0 0.60 divided by 3. We will get all the values now calculated and then one last step is left. So I have done the calculations as you can see on the circle I have written down the values and these are all my average abnormal returns. We have started from minus 1 sorry minus 3 then we have done minus 2 then we have done minus 1 then we have done on 0 day and then we have done on plus 1 then plus 2 and then plus 3 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 values we will get now you will sum them all and this is known as cumulative abnormal returns and you are getting it as I have already calculated for you that is 5.96 percent this is of course not close to 0 and therefore I can say that uh, based on the information from the three companies that are selected for event study, we can say that the market is inefficient as because the abnormal returns are not actually getting uh, corrected and they are quite different from zero and, and not at all close to zero and therefore the market is inefficient. So that's all about the event study and I think event study is uh, useful in other uh, matters also but it is of course a very essential tool to test whether the market is efficient in its semi-strong form or not. So friends we have discussed whatever is actually required the basics about efficient market hypothesis or efficient market theory. In the next video we will discuss about the market anomalies. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.